Okay, so it's time for Danish lesson number four. Fear. 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 <laughs> okay, I have to get one thing straightened out. Uh, because in the previous videos, uh, I didn't quite um, get to say what exactly you uh, is. Um, so I'm going to put it right on the line, right here and now. We have two ways of saying you to one person, direct and indirect, which is do, that is the direct way, and die, which is the indirect way. Then we have plural, where we have um, di, them, for example, uh, or you, if you are polite to an elderly person or so on, uh, if you want to show respect, then it's di, di. And another plural way of saying you is yeah, which is indirect, which is like I love you. To more persons, to several persons, it is yeah. Uh, then we have the direct way in plural of saying you, which is e. E. Like in stated in part three, three, three. Um, the labor e. What doing you? What are you doing? Uh, to several persons, then it is e. Well, labor, e. What doing you, e. Okay? Sorry for the mistakes in the past videos. Then for a friend of mine who had a Danish report, actually, he wanted to say, I have done my report on Denmark. And I promised him that I wanted to say that in Danish for him to present for his class or something. I don't know what he wanted to use it for. But I guess that was it. So, I have done my report on Den Denmark. I, jeg, have done, har lavet my report, min rapport about Denmark, om Denmark. So, to say the whole line, jeg har lavet min rapport om Danmark. You're welcome. Then there are clues for Nick. Nick Nine Freedom. Uh, he asked me if uh, I could give him some clues as to how to use Danish and so on and so forth because he's living in Copenhagen, which is the capital of Denmark. Which in Danish, the capital Copenhagen is called Copenhagen, uh, which actually directly translated means by a harbor in one word. Uh, but that isn't what it means. Just, yeah, it's pretty weird. But um, if I wanted to give us some clues as to how to use Danish, hmm, let me think. There is the in and it part. Now that I can't help you with. Um, you have to memorize every single noun in uh, the entire language because we have no rules. So it's like one sink, in vesk, uh, and one table, it bore. Um, yeah, it's so complicated because you have to memorize every single noun, as I said before. Uh, there are no rules as to where to use it. So that you'll have to do on your own. And then, even though it doesn't really involve uh, any language teaching, I just wanted to tell you that Denmark is one of the most expensive countries you can live in. This is cultural, of course. 
cultural education. We the cheapest pack of smokes, cigarettes, are like three dollars. That is pretty cheap actually compared to Sweden or Norway. Um, but everything else we pay from, uh, depending on how much you earn, then you pay taxes from 42 to 62 percent which sucks the main religion is Christianity then we have a lot of immigrants from like Israel, Pakistan Afghanistan and so on uh, who are Muslim I don't quite know the percentage but it's quite a lot actually so back to the teaching part. If you want to say how are you to one person, then it is but then how are you we actually say have you it how have you it how but then have you ha do it de so, the whole sentence, but then ha du de. But then ha du de. If you want to say it to several people, uh, then it is the direct way in plural, um, which is called, it is the same sentence except you replace the du with i. But then ha i de. How have you it? Yes. <laughs> then there is another way of saying how are you doing, which directly translated is how goes it, which is the normal way of uh, saying to your friends or so on, how's it going? Then you just say, but then, how? Goes it? Go. De. De. It. De. But then, go de.